listed so many different areas and dimensions that authors had submitted papers on and how we look at it. So, so if we look at um, us as a community of scholars, uh, how do you view the special issue charting the, the path on the research community? You know, what, what, what is the future like, particularly with respect to pandemics, what kind of research you think should be done um, that, that are learnings that are coming out of your, your, your editing the special issue? So uh, with that, we also sort of asked about the, uh, the phrase that one of my colleagues, um, uh, Professor Starr used was the dogs that live by. Uh, uh, evidence that is out there, but which we did accept uh, for whatever reason. For example, Sweden uh, didn't have the same distancing policies as we did. Uh, but their outcomes were not that different from ours. And what can we learn systematically from those experiences? Um, that's the kind of and now that pandemic is over, at least we're in the endemic stage, uh, there are new kinds of data sets available. And we hope that people will go out with those kinds of data, data sets to build new theory. Um, that's one. Another one was this uh, very nice paper on Doctors Without Borders, um, who kind of went out and did pretty unique things in Africa. Uh, now, the question is, they did it in Africa, but can you apply that to other parts of the world? Because doctors without borders are everywhere, right? So there's this broader ways of learning. A uh, second area in which we expect or hope, uh, as all, I'm speaking for all the editors here, um, that we would get new kinds of theory. And the last area is this notion of, I think, um, things like vaccines. I mean, we've seen a sea change in the way um, medicines are getting. Uh, developed and tested and used and, and that saved lives. And in my mind, we probably will not go back to business as usual. FDA changes the way we do things and others. And another area where we hope, I mean, healthcare operations are a huge area for us. And so we hope that uh, now that we've seen the switch, uh, it's sort of um, an event that's really triggered things before and after and what can we learn from these um, these sort of uh, pandemic-driven changes? Could those be captured as either event studies or other kinds of analysis? Um, and also, in, in, I mean, I, I'd leave this with one final thought. So at the November of uh, with the World Economic Forum and talked to a number of CEOs uh, during this conversation, and I remember the CEO of uh, Black & Decker sort of saying, uh, we've seen amazing things being done without new resources. Nobody was asking for millions of dollars of IT during pandemic. People just did what they could, uh, sometimes working at home, but and just got productivity and changes. And so he's turning around and asking, how can you justify to me asking for more investment all of a sudden to, now that pandemic is gone? I mean, not well, let's be honest. And so I think. We all have learned a lot. We are companies have learned a lot, and there's some undeniable learnings that have been now becoming part of our uh, operations and supply chain management practices. Um, and the, the issue becomes uh, how do we sort of formalize this? How do we build new theories and the public policies around it? Um, but would be very exciting. Um, that's kind of where I leave this at. That's great. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Actually, it turns out that uh, all our journals saw a spike in activity for submissions too, right? And yeah. the pandemic, so it's not just companies who are seeing a great deal of activity, but also us sitting at home. Yeah, people <laughs> sitting at home. And... That's right. That's right. I think uh, it's fascinating. Well, uh, I think uh, this was... Uh, I, you know, do, do you have any last comments for, for our- I just want to say uh, what a privilege it has been to work with my colleagues, uh, who brought a lot to the table, and our senior editors, uh, who brought even more effort to make this happen. I just want to thank everybody, um, and the authors, um, without whom uh, nothing would be possible. Uh, it just tells us, you know, what a robust we are, um, and uh, when really isn't, everything changes, you know, this point you're just making. 
that people actually raise their productivity to the level of thoughtfulness. And I, it's just a privilege to be a uh, part of that. Effort. So I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to the editors, Kalyan and Sabal, um, and for the community to make this happen. Well, th thank you for, for you, Sushil, Marty, and Ed for doing the special issue. I know it's a lot of heavy lifting. 150 papers is not a not a small amount of task to process. And uh, some of the papers are really interesting. I think I read some of them too. And uh, thank thank you for that. Uh, it was great having you on the on on the podcast today, Nathan. Thank you so much for thank um, you for the results. work. And today. Um, uh, today we talked to Professor Nitin Jaglekar from Boston University, who recently co-edited a special issue on the pandemic in the Production Operations Management Journal, along with um, uh, three other colleagues, uh, Professor Ed Anderson at UD Austin, um, Professor Marty Starr, and Professor um, uh, Sushil Gupta at uh, Florida International University. Um, so you heard our first special issue podcast today. Uh, thank you very much.